All right, let's jump right into it, everybody. So the market is still recovering, refresh. We're back up to almost 1.8 trillion. Lots of green. Feel a lot better about it when this third row's got a lot more green in it too, but it's a start. Enough of that. Um, this is the 15 minute chart on Bitcoin. Um, it looks to me, you know, you can see that ever since the crash, it, the bottoms are trending upward. I'm not going to keep that. Um, if you zoom out to the one hour, I don't know if you guys can hear my dog's nails on the floor or not, but man, they're loud right now. You, know, you can see it's on its way back up. <clears throat> Same thing over here with the total altcoin market cap. Here was the crash back here. Let me bring these down. Oop. Ever since that happened, you know, the bottoms are getting higher. So it's a good sign. Once again, I'm not really a chart guy, but I understand how some of this stuff works on the basic level anyway. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. I was cleaning my glasses. These are, this is what's a lot of the stuff that I have going on. So if you ever want to look at this in the videos, just to get some ideas of stuff to look into, you feel free. Um, I just keep them by percentage of change. And as you can see, if you'd have bought, if you bought, the, this is just today too. If you bought the actual dip down in here, a lot of these are more around like 30s, 40s, and 50s and 60s possibly even. But enough of that. What I wanted to get into was in the group, I have a lot of people talking about different strategies. We have some stock people in there, some crypto people in there, whatever. Uh, some people are utility maxis like me. Other people are riding pump and dumps. It's, you know, got a little bit of everything going on. I think that's awesome. Um, <clears throat> so stable coins are a big part of what I do and what my plan is. And I wanted to share this with you guys because I do think a lot of people coming into the crypto space might not really see the benefit of stable coins. So <clears throat> we're just going to go over this article quickly and I'll kind of explain to you guys how I see it. Um, Cryptocurrency is notoriously volatile, which reduces mainstream participation and limits it use, limits its use to a usable platform exchange. Um, Stablecoin is a low volatility version of a cryptocurrency, and the coin is usually backed by a stable asset. They're useful for investors who want to keep their assets in the crypto space. Switching from crypto to fiat currency can be expensive and time consuming. Stablecoin gives the investor the best of both worlds, a stable asset within the crypto space with an advantageous transactional speed. Because of the relative st stability, stablecoins also have an easier time staying in compliance with regulators. Um, you know, so stablecoins are pegged to an asset with stable value. They can also be backed by an algorithm. There's, there's a few different ones. You got commodity backed coins, fiat based coins, uh, crypto backed, seniorage backed, and you know, this will go into how all that works it's something you have to research yourself i'm not going to dedicate the video to explaining all of that so according to this article the best stable coins right now are tether which <clears throat> i highly disagree they have been subject to multiple investigations and lawsuits and i believe it was published the other day that only 28 percent of their uh supply is actually backed by you know traditional paper money the other is backed by various paper monies and other assets from what I understand. So, but they're the most used. They are on every platform. They're ERC based, just like USDC. Um, so they do cost a little bit to transact back and forth. I think like 500 bucks will cost you like 25 bucks to move it sometimes. It's not that bad, but something to be aware of. Uh, True USD is another one. You know, I've never really used them. I know Paxos is huge. USD coin is one that I've used quite a bit too. They can also run on the Stellar networks and stuff. Uh, and the one I've actually been using the most recently is BUSD, which is pegged one to one to the US dollar and it's through Binance. It's not as universal as far as being able to spend it on exchanges goes, but it's still stable and you can always just trade in and out of it. So <clears throat> with all that being said, I'm not even gonna get, okay, so maybe they, maybe they say some stuff here. Having a stable coin in your portfolio is a good way to diversify and protect yourself. If you're tra actively trading volatile altcoins, you can use the stable coin to move quickly 
out of falling assets and repurchase at a better price, which is exactly what I do. So what I was getting at, let's say you have an asset that you've bought into, and this is just me personally. Let's say you bought 5,000 of a random coin. Um, they go up 30%, you know, in a couple days, a week, two weeks, whatever it is. 30% is a hell of a return. So you might say, okay, well I'm 30% up on all my money. I'm expecting this to go higher. I'm gonna just go ahead and pull 20% of these out, you know, a thousand of them. I'm 30% up on those and you put those into stable coins. And now you keep riding the train to see how high it can go and maybe you have some price targets set where you skim in the stables again. The beautiful thing about doing this is, you know, what just happened a couple days ago. Here you are, you've been profiting, you've gained, you know, five, ten, twenty thousand dollars, whatever it is in the recent months, and you've pulled off a percentage of your profit and you've got it in stable coins. The entire market takes a crap. Everybody freaks out, and you're seeing prices that some of you have never even seen before because you guys just got here. So instead of having to now all your profits have been erased, you're now waiting to get back to where you were in order to even be able to sell and not have lost money, what would be amazing is, like, like I said, you already have profits on the side. Even if it's a minuscule amount, you're now compounding your profits on the way back up. I mean, I bought HBAR when it went down. It went down another 10 cents, so I, you know, it kind of stunk there, but I was getting it a lot cheaper than I've been getting it and close to where I first started getting it. And so now that it's came back up X percentage, technically I'm in the profit zone, you know, not a whole lot, but I think I made like 10% already. And depending upon the amount of money you have in these assets, like 10% can be enough to pull out of an asset and take a break and figure it out. I mean, you know, not me personally, I'm not quite on that level, but you know, some of you guys might be. So it's just something to think about. Like in traditional markets, if your portfolio went up five, 10% over the course of a year, you are getting padded on the back. So just think about that when you have these assets that go up. I know it's I get, I get caught up all the time on, should I sell? Is it going to moon more? You know, is this the one that if I'm going to sell it and regret it? Because I've been through that before. I had a lot of Bitcoin, you know, 10 years ago. I had a lot of them. And it's it really, you know, I'm not going to get into that because it's turned into a long video. But to have that ability to just recompound your profits over and over and over again. I mean, you can jump in a pump and dump and ride the fib levels up and down while it retraces back and forth between the 702 and you can kill it. I don't like to do that because it's very fast moving and you gotta be paying attention. I prefer utility coins like most of you guys know. Pretty much everything I hold is in the top like 250 tokens. You know, there's almost 10,000 of them, so that's pretty high in the rankings. And it's just something I want you guys to keep in mind. Stable coins are great. You park them there, they're still on there, you don't gotta deposit, you know, it's a little bit of your profits. You don't have to do everything. Some people, blockchain backer, I think he says when he hits his price targets, he sells 65% of his position and leaves 35 in. That way he's had enough of a victory when he reaches those price levels that even if the other 35 completely tanks, he's still happy with what happened and if it moons, even better. So just something to think about. Um, outside of that, I just wanted to get into this. So to, I believe it's this is for tomorrow. Hold on, let's start this out. So that hearing will be tomorrow. If you want to use this number, there's the code. You can listen to the hearing. I've been able to get in on a couple of them. Uh, it's hard. The spots feel fast. I mean, people are like waiting to get on here. You know, there's people with a lot of money in the crypto space. Moving on from that, this is Rosie Rios. She was the 43rd treasurer of the United States. Um, that's just an awesome job to have, you know, and you know, now she is on the board of directors for Ripple. The reason why I wanted to point this out is with this lawsuit going on, you know, there's a lot of things building and I want you to think about one thing. When you read this, Now, don't get me wrong, Christina Campbell, there's a lot of good things to talk about there too, and I'm not sliding her, but we're gonna we're sticking to this. 
Do you think that this person, just read that in blue, is this person going to leave that position to go here in the middle of an SEC lawsuit? I mean, one of the biggest financial lawsuits possibly in history, depending upon how this ends. This is going to be big. I, I, some people say it's going to have huge implications for the entire space. I agree with that only in the sense that I think there will be a precedent set one way or another. I don't think that... It means what happens to Ripple happens to everybody else. I don't think that, but just think about that though. That's this is what she did. Her name is on the money that's in your wallet. I want if it's any if it's any type of new, you go look at it. That's her signature on there. Would you leave a position like that to go work for a company being sued by the US government, the Security Exchange Commission, if you did not have supreme confidence? And what that outcome was going to be. Just think about that. I'm not telling you what to think. You decide what to think for yourself. But I want you guys to think about that. Because I know it caught my attention. And I can't stop thinking about it. So um, Here is John Deaton. You know, he's chiming in too. A former U.S. Treasurer disagrees with the SEC. And says XRP does have utility. Um, also, the Federal Reserve is releasing a research paper about them moving, moving to central bank digital currencies. Those are the CBDCs I every, always talk about. That is coming, guys. The Fed coin will be a real thing. Now, as far as her talking about the train has already left the station, I did post currency this as a earlier. Form of currency. Oh, I posted earlier in my group. I'm going to play it in the video, too. Just listen to this little piece of this interview. What do you think about cryptocurrency as a form of currency? Well, uh, I think the train's already left the station in terms of cryptocurrency. Uh, you may or may not know that I just joined the board of Ripple. And the what? The reason why I chose to, to join that board, it's, in my opinion, one of the few cryptocurrency options out there that has a credible and legitimate use. So financial institutions use it to settle cross-border payments. Hold on, guys. One more time. It's in my opinion, one of the few cryptocurrency options out there that has a credible and legitimate use. So financial institutions use it to settle cross-border payments. Hope you guys are paying attention. Um, and then this guy, Rob XRP, another great channel on Twitter, if you guys are on here, he will be tweeting the basic, I think he's going to do like a transcript type thing where he's typing it as it goes through. So you'll be able to actually read in, almost in real time what's being said by both sides of the uh, of the case ripple and uh, the sec they're they're pretty fun man they get heated so uh but yeah i uh that's it for this video one more time i just want to right here why i chose to to join that board it's in my opinion one of the few cryptocurrency options out there that has a credible and legitimate use so financial institutions use it to settle cross-border payments why i chose to leave my position as the treasurer of the united states of america for this cryptocurrency company is because I chose to, to join that board. It's, in my opinion, one of the few cryptocurrency options out there that has a credible and legitimate use. So financial institutions use it to settle cross-border payments. Don't make me put this thing on loop, guys. I hope you're picking up what I'm putting down. That's it for me. I'll talk to y'all later.